Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to uh, depart from the sermon series uh, temporarily. This morning, my topic, my title was Why Be Thankful? Did that caught you all off guard, right? No, 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 but nobody expected a sermon like that today. But thankfulness is one of the most pleasing virtues of life. It's almost universally resented when somebody is not thankful. And it's always appreciated when someone is. But sometimes it's easy to forget some of the reasons why we should be thankful. We look back in history at different times that people in America have decided to take a particular day to remember all that God has done. After surviving the trip across the Atlantic Ocean where most of the pilgrims lost spouses during the voyage. The original proposal was to have a day of fasting and mourning to ask God for mercy upon them. But it was decided instead that they would take a day to be thankful for what they did have. For the fact that they had made the trip safely. And that they were now in this land of abundance. <clears throat> what are some of the reasons that we, not them, but us today, why should we be thankful? Well, think for a moment about God and his nature. If we know about who God really is, not the concept that a lot of people have. We have reason to be thankful. It's not just a figure of speech. God, we, we refer to God as our Father because of his fatherly nature. Matthew 7, 9 through 11. Jesus said, Of what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good, give, good things to them that ask him? We have, or we've had, fathers on earth who've loved us. We have a heavenly Father that Jesus said loves us more than they ever could. We should be thankful for that. We should be thankful that he's patient with us. I know I would have lost patience with me a long time ago. 
2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not waiting for an opportunity to punish us when we do wrong. He's patiently waiting for us to repent and come back to Him. We should be thankful that God is fair and righteous. Genesis 18.25 When Abraham was speaking with God about the punishment that was to come upon the wicked city of Sodom. He said, That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? In other words, Abraham knew that it wouldn't be right, fair, just for God to punish in Abraham's mind the many, many righteous people that were in that city along with the wicked. He knew of the fairness, the righteousness of God. Now, God gave Abraham an opportunity and the fact was there weren't as many righteous people there as Abraham thought. Acts 10, 34 and 35. Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. As we were talking about in the Bible class, God could have just arbitrarily chosen who would be saved and who would be lost. But that would not be fair and right. That would be respecting persons. Instead, he has chosen certain conditions and he gives all men the opportunity to meet them. Peter said that what it takes is to fear him and work righteousness. We should be thankful that God's justice comes with mercy. But God's justice alone would be punishment for all who sin. But Ephesians 2, 4 says, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. We have been offered mercy. We have that possibility. Yet at the same time, his mercy is not without justice. Psalm 89, 14, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. This is hard for some people to see. If we had blind justice, we'd all be lost. Yet if we had the kind of mercy that some people think God offers, that he would just close his eyes to every offense, then there would be no justice. Price 
There needs to be paid for an offense, which is why his son paid the price. So that there could still be justice. Because we should be thankful that he wanted us to be saved. John 3, 17. Everybody stop to verse 16. You know that chapter keeps going. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. 1 Timothy 2.4 speaks of God who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. We've been given all that. And we should be thankful. What about the life that we're living? We should be thankful in this life that we're not going through this alone. We should be thankful that we have friends. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. We should be thankful for the family that we have. Yes, really, even when you come together on Thanksgiving. Just don't discuss politics and you'll probably be all right. Genesis 2, 18 through 24. We focus on this when we're speaking about marriage, but look at the point. The Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God called the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. But Husband and wife is only one part of our family. From that, typically, come children. We have parents. If you follow the family tree, you're going to have aunts, uncles, cousins. We should be there together for each other. We should be thankful that we have brethren. Not the brethren according to the flesh, but we already covered them. But one another. 1 Peter 1.22 Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. If we have that Pure love one for another. Maybe we'll remember how much we should be thankful for each other. You know what? You're not alone. We're all here together to help each other through this life. To encourage each other, to strengthen each other through the difficult times. We should be thankful that we're not currently under great persecution. It has happened, 
it probably will happen. We should be ready for it, but it's not happening now. There are people who are making things difficult for those who have any kind of religious belief. But we're not being thrown to lions yet, so we got that going for us. John 15, 18 and 19, Jesus said, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Much as the world might hate you, it's not taking things out on you too bad right now, so be thankful. We should be thankful that we still have the freedom to take care of our Father's business. Colossians 3.17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Colossians 2.23, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. We should be thankful for the beautiful world that God's given us to live in. Even if it's a little colder than we might like right now. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. We can look at the world around us. We can be reminded that this is not just some cosmic accident. This is the creation of God. Made for our use. And we can be thankful. We can be thankful that God did not leave us with no idea of what we could do to be pleasing to Him. But instead, He gave us instructions so that we could know what would be pleasing to him. He gave us his word. And if we look at what he said, we can find what would be pleasing to him. Then we can take that, apply it to our lives. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's profitable, profitable for doctrine. That's teaching. It tells us what to do. For reproof, it tells us when we're doing it wrong. For correction, it tells us how to fix it. For instruction in righteousness. We have what it takes so that we can be perfect. We can be complete. We have everything we need for all good works. Isn't that something to be thankful for? There's an old song. It says, the moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. Well, there's so much for us to be thankful for and so much for us to be thinking about that they're good, wonderful, edifying things. <laughs> Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says, Finally, brethren. I'm saying finally, brethren, too. So, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, 
Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Those things don't need to cost us anything, but we need to remember the price that was paid that we could enjoy those things that are honest, just, pure, lovely. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He paid the price so that we didn't have to. If there's anything that you need to do this morning, so that you can take advantage of that gift that's free for you, but cost him so much or if you've done that in the past but you need to make things right now we ask that you would take the opportunity that you would come forward in simple obedient faith as together we stand and sing a song of encouragement <laughs>